Hello everyone. We are getting quite close to the weekend, and that's a good thing because uh, I'm actually looking forward to this one. You know, with uh, with this being such a busy week, and um, yeah, uh, so that means let's get to our highlights today. So let's start. The first one is from the Midnight Library. It's a supplemental highlight. Uh, this was, I mean, it was a fine book. You know, it was not really my type of book. So let's read it. Every second of every day, we are entering a new universe, and we spend so much time wishing our lives were different, comparing ourselves to other people and to other versions of ourselves, when really most lives contain degrees of good and degrees of bad. It's not. I mean, it's it's a fine insight. Uh, the story is itself about you know the library being a library of different lives the protagonist can choose from. So that's the context over here. The realization that okay, you know, it, there's no nothing like a perfect life. So yeah, like I said, it's it's fine. Let's move on. Seven and a half lessons about the brain. In comparison, human newborns are pretty pathetic. They can't even control their limbs. It takes weeks before they can swat their tiny hands with intent. Many animals emerge from the egg or womb with brains that are more fully wired to control their bodies, but little human brains are born under construction. So. This actually holds a lot of significance for me. You know, this realization that human bonds, are, uh, human newborns are, you know, I mean, I'll not use the word pathetic, uh, although it's used in the conventional, uh, sorry, not in the conventional sense, uh, you know, not in the negative sense. They're, they're pretty powerless. I, I let, let me use that word. And, yeah, you know, as compared to animals um, who, when they are born, I, I mean, I, be, I believe, you know, many of them, they can straight away walk. Uh, even so, uh, the the point of the book, you know, the brains are really organs that control our bodies. You know, the metabolic, like the whole body, really everything in the body. Uh, so, in comparison, human newborns, if if that's the purpose, you know, like I mean, uh, if the brain was ready, the babies should be able to control their whole bodies, uh, similar to many other animals. But it's different. And I'm forgetting the point this uh, book goes on to make, uh, you know, but to me, it's it's like philosophically speaking, it's it's about learning that um, uh, for human beings, it's all about learning right from when you're born, you're learning everything, you know, starting with how, learning how to control your body. So let's move on. The talent war. You can't rely on altruistic goodwill alone. You must also offer adequate financial compensation. Under no circumstances should you force your A players to take a pay cut to join the hiring team. They should be paid the same or more than what they would earn in the normal role. Yeah, so the author is talking about, you know, the hiring team really needs to contain A players, like, like the author says. And um, the financial compensation should not become a question over here. You know, they should be paid the same or more like the like the author is suggesting i think this is pretty obvious i mean at least today we we know this for sure that uh, you know the, the way the hiring works um the kind of people you need in the hiring team and you know why uh, I, I mean I, I don't even think that uh, many of us would question the idea that uh, they should be paid the same <laughs> uh, of course they should so let's move on factfulness to understand a phenomenon we need to make sure we understand the shape of its curve. By assuming we know how a curve continues beyond what we see, we will draw the wrong conclusions and come up with the wrong solutions. This is That is what I did before I realized that the Ebola epidemic was doubling. And that is what everyone is doing who thinks that world population is just increasing. <coughs> so, the author is talking about the curve of growth. And, you know, in the early stages, you may look at the curve and you might think that, oh, it's just growing linearly or it's just doubling. Uh, but <clears throat> once you realize the shape of the whole curve, that's when you realize that, okay, it's, is it exponential or not? So even the tiny portion of the curve that could tell you, <coughs> that could tell you, excuse me, that could tell you, um, or it could hint to you the, the shape that it's going to take. Is it going to be exponential? Is it going to be linear? Is it trending downwards and so on? So that's the point, you know, understand the shape of the curve. Uh, or in uh, more calculus terms, rate of growth. <coughs> it's more. Guide to organization design. Be flexible and adaptable enough to 
enable managers to forward plan in a context of constantly changing operating environments and uh, i i have a note this implies that again. <coughs> okay i think i'm not really recalling this and move on the earned life it's not that the honors and attention and respect each well earned in its time were never real but they have faded to recall them is no longer an expression of fulfillment it's actually more of regret about their impermanence impermanence about how swiftly and unceremoniously they slipped away the author is talking about uh, you know uh, re us recalling our own um, victories uh, the honors and the attention and respect that go along with victories so it's not that they were not real like the other says you know they have faded and uh, the regret is not about uh, you know like you know it's not about uh, 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 so, so yeah the, the like the uh, the problem with this is sorry not a problem let me rephrase this um uh, to recall them is no longer an expression of fulfillment yeah so even if, even if you try to remember those things it it's not going to it's not going to kind of satisfy you or fulfill you it's actually you could actually feel a twinge of regret that okay you no know, everything that i did and it's all gone now you know that 15 minutes of fame or what whatever um it's it's more about that and um, yeah i don't think i can really talk more about this it's it's like i mean my my thoughts are all over the place right now with this so let's move on get it done when you find yourself facing a goal that's highly important framing your progress based on what you haven't yet accomplished may be more motivating than thinking about what you've already done uh, so get it done like we have previously discussed it's it's a book about motivation in different scenarios so you know what works in a different scenario so uh, in a case where you're facing a goal which is highly important so uh, in that case framing your progress based on what you haven't accomplished is it's a better shot you know you have a better shot with that rather than thinking about what you've already done because if you think about that you are more likely to procrastinate so um again it it goes along with many other different insights into you know um what if a goal is uh, highly personal to you or if you are highly committed to a goal or if you are very very new to a goal there are different strategies in each of these cases you know strategies that you could use to decide how do you uh, what do you look at Uh, so that you keep up the motivation to do that continue doing the work we'll move on working backwards the more pr faqs they read the and the more products they build and launch using the pr faq process the more capable they become at identifying the omissions and flaws in the author's thinking and so the process itself creates a tier of master evaluators as it vets and strengthens the idea and aligns everyone involved in the project from individual contributor to ceo it also increases the likelihood that a project will be approved and funded I think this is straightforward. I I'm not. I don't think I need to really say anything over here. So PR FAQ refers to uh, a press release and frequently asked questions. So it's a document that's uh, that's uh, Amazon's principle of uh, uh, always thinking about the customer. You know, so if they want to launch, if they want to think about a new product, they start by writing the PR, the press release for that, and the FAQs for that. So yeah, that's what it refers to. and with that uh, you know this gives clarity in every the whole uh, uh, the whole team's thinking um yeah uh, i think with that the rest of the highlight should be pretty straightforward so we'll move on the molecule of more you might get a few weeks of dopaminergic thrills by buying an expensive swiss time piece but after that it's just a watch getting promoted to district manager means going to work exciting at first but eventually it becomes the same old grind creativity is different because it stirs together hnn and with dopamine it's like mixing little bit of carbon with iron to make steel again i think it's pretty clear you know what the highlight is saying um i don't think just goes to show the impermanence you know uh, imp impermanence of uh, our victories or our achievements or our acquisitions that you may get a temporary dopaminergic thrill but it doesn't last but creativity is different you know it it, it kind of it involves both hnn and dopaminergic circuits um and of course the book goes on to elaborate that but the point is essentially this so let's move on extreme ownership 
In combat as in life, the outcome is never certain. The picture never clear. There are no guarantees of success. But in order to succeed, leaders must be comfortable under pressure and act on logic, not emotion. Again, I think this is one of those, you know, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much to say, uh, much for me to say over here. So let's uh, let's move on and let's keep this one short today. Uh, it, it's it's quite nice, you know, 10 minutes mark. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this one um, and, and the rest of them as well. Thank you.